I was not going to make a video featuring me cleaning this GPU. It is not something that I would find very exciting. So why are you seeing this? Well, because I picked up this GTX 1060 blower card a couple of days ago and it looked fairly clean with the owner telling me that it was repasted. I was kind of surprised when I put it on my test bench and the core temp shot up to 82C and throttled. I thought that either it was a bad mount or the paste used was low quality. Boy was I wrong. I've already taken off all the screws but I promise I did not disturb anything inside after taking a quick peek. This is bad enough that I will call this a failure mode of this blower style GPU. The amount of dust that was trapped at the blower outlet completely took me by surprise considering the otherwise relatively dust free condition of the card. Now, this obviously is a lower end model compared even to something like the premium blower style founders edition and thus easier to take apart, but no matter which blower style card you have, after seeing this I hope it will entice you to have a look at yours, at the very least give it a once over compressed gas if you don't want to open it up. Because I gotten this far, I might as well refresh the thermal paste too, not so sure if it was going to help anymore considering the thermal bottleneck was clearly elsewhere, but it will not hurt at all. Four quick screws later and the die is exposed. As usual you need to untighten them in a crisscross pattern as to not put uneven pressure. There is no heat spreader on this, just see the exposed die so if one corner gets chipped by mistake then the whole card is effectively dead. Clean the top of the die first, I always do this to make sure that there are no scratches or corner missings on cars that were previously repasted. I only ever found one die with a chipped corner and miraculously it still worked just fine. I honestly don't feel like tempting fate again. I then proceed to a apply a very liberal amount of isopropyl alcohol to try to loosen up as much of the overflowing thermal paste as possible. You don't really have to do this, the top of the die is the important heat transfer surface, somehow I feel much better if I manage to clean off all of the gunk. I usually use a soft bristle toothbrush with loads of isopropyl and just try to soak up the sludge that forms with some paper towel. Finally, after I'm satisfied that the die is nice and clean and I've taken out as much dust as I can, I give the whole card a liberal soaking with isopropyl followed by a gentle brushing. Afterwards, I would use a data vac to push off as much residue as possible followed by a quick blast with a hairdryer to ensure that all the alcohol evaporates. Not film this as I did it outside to not spray alcohol laden with dirt everywhere in my office. This is a completely optional step, I just do it because I like the PCB to be as clean as possible. Almost time to start the reassembly, but first we need to apply a fresh coat of thermal interface compound. For repasting bare dies, I highly suggest using the best tim you can get your hands on, and for me, this time it's Arctix MX5. For CPUs, I never bother to spray it around, but here any tiny speck that is devoid of paste will cause a hotspot and a potential problem, so it pays off to do this step properly. So don't skimp on the paste. As contrary to my advice on a CPU, going a bit overboard is way preferable than not putting enough. From here on out it's just a matter of screwing everything back together in the reverse disassembly order starting with the heatsink. I do appreciate the captive screws here as it makes reassembly that much easier. I've done a few of these Zotac cards over the years and this is the first revision I had with captive screws. That being said though, one of my main bugbears with this design is the fact that the ramp chips get absolutely no cooling. The blower outlet ramp is actually right on top of some of them and there isn't anything I can do to glue heatsinks on because there is no space. Sure, it's easy enough to mod if, if you have a few hours at your disposal and a beefy cooler off a dead card, but considering it's 2022 and this isn't anywhere near a top of the range card, I think I will abstain from doing that. In practice, for gaming, this really isn't an issue as the memory chips will not get hot enough, but it also means that the 220 Mbps extra on the memory clock is about as much as I would safely recommend. I definitely I a cheap blower style 1060 with the critical eye in case they were ever used extensively for mining. Usually would have no qualms buying a used but not abused old mining card apart from these rather prolific Zotac sort of reference cooler designs that were used extensively in pre-built PCs by various OEMs. In comparison, the 1060 Founders Edition cards have a much beefier blower style cooler and the memory chips are also cooled using little heat sinks and that irks me a bit. Anyway, irrespective of my feelings, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and well, see you in the next one.